Thursday, May 9th, um, meeting of the Northampton Planning Board. Uh, we always begin our hearings with public comment on any item that is not on our agenda for this evening. So if anyone would like to say anything about an item that is not on our agenda, please come to the podium and let us know. I don't know if I'm on the agenda. My name is Peter Schlesinger. I have a lot on 24 Stoddard that was up for a um, subdivision with a new 50 foot. And I don't know. If right. So that uh, this is the Stoddard ANR. Yeah. So uh, we will be discussing that later on. So um, so you don't need to, to say anything at this time. OK, one more question. Sure. Um, I'm a psychotherapist. I have a client at 8.30 tonight. Will I be likely to be able to make that? Yes, and in fact, his, typically with this kind of ANR, there isn't an applicant who makes a presentation or anything. It's something that, it's discussion among the board and staff. So um, it's not necessary. You're not required to You're stay. You're not required to stay sure. or, you know, or to be here. Um, Just tell me when I should stop. But the issue, I understand there was a question with the building inspector and the zero lot line provision that my builder wants. And I really want the ANR approval separate from that. So if there's any tangle about that, let's just go ahead and get the, the ANR approval for the subdivision. He can get, I'm fine to sign off on that, but he can go through the proper sequence. Right, so typically that, that is the process. We, you know, an ANR will come to us and then we will make a recommendation to staff um, to allow that to happen. And then when you have a site plan or a special permit application, it'll come to us for the full review. Um, and that's when we'll go through the, you know, the technical details. So my understanding is that we can have discussion about the ANR without Right, doesn't have anything to do with the right, yeah. So have anything to do with the building permit up. Without the zero lot line coming into it. Correct. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So if you would like to head okay. out, you are welcome to. Okay. <laughs> we won't be asking you any questions as part of um, our other items at the end of the agenda. You know, that Stoddard A and R is on here, but we wouldn't be asking any questions about how the site might be developed. Well, I've lived here for 20 years. I was on a planning board in New York State for seven years. I think I'm going to stay for a while for nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, welcome. Uh, so we will move on to our 7 p.m. hearing, which is review of large-scale solar array ordinance. Um, as a little bit of background, this had come to us previously. Uh, it was continued to uh, an additional planning board hearing and then voted on and sent to the Legislative Matters Committee of the City Council. They have sent it back to us. Um, and I guess I'll ask Carolyn to summarize if anything had changed from their reading of it or um, if there yeah. is something for us to. Sure. And I'm sorry I didn't mail this out to you. I was, at, I was waiting for the city solicitor to send comment back and, um, and then I never got it and then realized, oh my gosh, it's Thursday and I haven't heard back from the city solicitor. So, um, and then I also want to explain what happened. So you guys officially had a public hearing. You made an official recommendation to Legislative Matters Committee. Um, then um, it went to the Legislative Matters Committee and in between time there was a meeting with the um, Public Shade Tree Commission, and some concerns were raised about, um, in particular, about the threshold at which um, these additional criteria would be triggered. Mm -hmm. um, so it went to Legislative Matters with um, a three, it, with your recommendation, a three-acre um, mm -hmm. threshold for um, when these new standards would be triggered for analysis and review by the board. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a concern that that was too uh, large an area um, before the, the additional analysis would be required for review. Um, so legislative matters was concerned that um, if that the board didn't hear the one acre proposal, which came out of Public Shade Tree Commission um, as the threshold and uh, legislative matters committee members um, wanted to push it back and have Planning Board and Public Shade Tree Commission work out the number and not have Legislative Matters Committee figure out what the number was. 
Um, the issue with that, though, is you've already made a formal recommendation, and that was based coming off of a public hearing. Right. We did not re-advertise a public hearing for this meeting. So um, this will just be sort of commentary and discussion, and you can say you don't have a problem with the changes, but your, rec your original recommendation will still stand because that's the official recommendation. But legislative matters can change our recommendation if they want to. Right, that's their yeah, prerogative that's their is to job. say, right. that's their okay. job. Their job is to then make a recommendation after all the input from the various places where it's already um, been reviewed and then present their recommendation to the full city council. So at this so, stage, our, our kind of couple of options would be, I mean, we wouldn't withdraw our recommendation. Have that you can't it. because it's not a public hearing and officially right. your recommendation has to come off of a public hearing we didn't Got have it. time to re-advertise this and it's okay. not really appropriate right. to make a new recommendation so I guess you're you know I can take feedback back to the Commission I mean to the um, subcommittee and let them know that you discussed it and a you don't have issues with it or B you have lots of issues with it and right. you, you you're still firm on your original recommendation I guess right. um, it's a little messy that way but um, that's the way they voted <laughs> so um, the so while I'll go over the this the there are probably four changes four significant changes that um, have taken place since you saw this last and that was based on meeting I met individually with Lily Lombard and then she went back to the Public Shade Tree Commission to talk about those changes so first of all with these changes I will say the Public Shade Tree Commission um, again wants to be considered a co-sponsor and they're supporting this um, these amendments the um, first one is that um, there was a lot of discussion about whether this should be site plan or special permit mm -hmm. and staff had come back originally to say well let's just put it under site plan call it what it is we're saying this is allowed but you have to provide all this analytical data about the project um, so at this point um, um, the, the draft puts the analysis back into special permit and that's the thing I was waiting for Alan Seawall to comment on. I don't think he'll have a problem that it'll be special permit. It's still allowed, but the special permit, I'm hoping it'll be fine. I did check in with the mayor's office and the um, mayor said he was fine with where it was going. He didn't have anything to add or subtract <laughs> from um, Did we, I, I, I mean, what, didn't we want something? We well, wanted a special. Well, we said that sort of having a site plan with needing to meet these additional criteria is almost the same as how we consider special permit anyway. Right. So it, 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 it seems more logical that it is considered a special permit. That's yeah. isn't by right. It's, okay. it's meet all of these other thresholds. Right. Okay. Provide all this other and, data. And that's why I think it's it's okay to have this modification. I mean, and so, you know, thinking about, um, you know, making sure that we're not adopting something that's inconsistent with um, what um, some in the legal world in Massachusetts think are sort of the special cases for solar. Right. Um, I right. think given that it's so specific, just throwing it over a special permit probably is not enough to, um, and it's so specific that applicants will know exactly what they need to meet mm -hmm. ahead of time. So mm -hmm. they're not gonna be surprised by some, you know, by anything. So that was one thing, so switching it back to special permit. Okay. Um, the other um, item was um, adding, uh, so changing the threshold to from three acres to two acres. And so yes, that's a compromise between three and one, but also I think it's you can rationalize that or we as a community can rationalize that because as I mentioned in the public hearing, there we've had two solar projects so far, one of them, um, came through um, with 24,900 something board feet of, of removal and that area amounted to two acres. Mm -hmm. um, the second project which is the one that um, came through sort of the back door there was three acres of removal when they hit a 25,000 board foot limit. So 25,000 board feet was is what's on the books now. Right. 
So, you know, it's a toss up. You could use either of those two examples and still say it's a rational number because it sort of meets what was already on the grant books. So two acres, um, and then, um, um, the next item was that we added um, another requirement for review that um, the area for removal shall not be located within the area that's mapped by the Nature Conservancy's map of resilient and connected landscapes um, for the following. What they categorize as resilient with confirmed diversity, climate flow zones, or climate corridors. So what that means is the Nature Conservancy has done this large scale scientific analysis of corridors along the East Coast going into the Midwest of where there are important areas of ecological diversity that should be maintained and are important to sort of bolster the country against the effects of climate change. Right. And um, they've mapped these um, um, to a point where you can zoom in to Massachusetts and you can zoom into Northampton and it'll show these different important um, areas of um, critical diversity, habitat yeah. diversity, and also for climate um, mm -hmm. protection. And that information is public for whoever is interested in it's doing It's public and we also use that same mapping tool when we apply for grants to purchase open space and we say look this piece of open space that we want to purchase is within this um, mapped area yeah the one thing that's sort of added on to this criteria is to say if you're basically so if you're in this mapped area um but it's developed it's already previously developed you can um move forward with your solar project if it's in the mapped area and it's in a pristine right. forest area, then the answer would be no. And the reason why we add developed area is because the mapping tool isn't so precise to go down to exactly on the ground where the yeah. line is for the map. It's yeah. sort of blobby when you get, you know, yeah, when you yeah. zoom in to that level. So, I mean, I have enormous respect for the Nature Conservancy, but I do have an issue kind of relying on a map that is that is, has not been adopted by some governmental agency as a reference map, like FEMA floodplain maps or FEMA maps. Like, mm -hmm. Using it for a grant application is very different from making an ordinance that relies on, on it. Because if Exxon decides to come out with their own maps of biodiversity and they do, you know, that's, it, I just, I'm not totally comfortable saying okay. like, we're gonna consult with a third party organization's map. I trust it, I trust their data, but then it should be adopted by MassGIS or it should be adopted by some public body, you know, and sort yeah. of like authorized as like, this is this is an objective, scientifically based, appropriate reference uh -huh. that we can create laws around. Yeah. Like, that's my personal feeling. Okay. Yeah. And, and as you say, it's blobby when yeah. you get down to it. Right. right. I have a question. That concern is that how you define the developed area? I mean, any improvement? Any yeah, improvement so if what? there's, road or, yeah. it could be roads, Building it could be roads, structures, pipeline. it could be, um, yeah, pipeline or, or utility corridor of some other kind. If you have an official road or some road that if somebody did it, that's considered? Well, that's a good question. I think a woods road that's used for logging, I wouldn't necessarily, call, I would not call that developed. Um, but if you have for logging, logging industry or business, yeah. So if you need to go into the forest to cut tree to cut timber because you're yeah. you have a, yeah. um, um, you typically clear a path for for the truck to get in there. I'm not. Sh I, I wouldn't necessarily say that's developed because the idea of those. I mean, some of those logging roads are. Um, I, and I, again, maybe it depends on the logging road yeah. because. It could be there for a century, and it's well maintained as a driveway versus, you know, one-off access point to um, so pull So it's an easement, that kind of stuff, it would be considered like a... Well, not necessarily an easement. I mean, really sort of what's on the ground, how much has been disturbed and, and altered yeah, to a different 
use. Can I? Ask, I mean, can we? I mean, I, this is really interesting to know that this exists, but I, I'm much more interested to know like how much of this land really affects Northampton. I mean, are, are we really even talking about something that is an issue for Northampton with this? This, you know, yeah. like I mean, we could be arguing about something that hasn't. There's no. So that's currently on so that's a good question i think currently the portion of northampton that affects is really sort of around the west farms road corridor and west and a little bit east of that where dpw has the watershed land around um 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 north of chesterfield road and south of chesterfield so, i mean how much of it is even developable i mean if if the city already owns it i mean are we just talking Dot and dot. Um, I don't mean I'm not there, being. I would I'm say, not to, yeah, yeah. I would say along some of those corridors where you could access land. I mean, the other pieces we're probably not talking about a lot because you can't. You know, it's further off the roads where these um, areas of corridors or resilient lands are located mm -hmm. and i think if you're going to do a solar development you really need to be up in a place where you can access the grid um or three phase yeah. and not just any you know utility right. pole so it's probably you're probably not going to be going too far afield from the main um roads in yeah. the city um but there and there are some of these categories that are not in Northampton at all, like a climate zone. But as more and more data gets put into the model, it could be that that shifts over time, you know, 10, 15 years or whatever. But currently now, I don't think it's a lot. I mean, it's a good chunk of a forested area in the western part of the city, but some of that is not accessible. Can, can we, I'm sorry, can I just, one more thing. Is it possible to ask, because I, I completely agree that using using a model that's not this government sanctioned model is a problem. Is there a way to put into into the recommendation something like uh, we're looking, you know, as models are adopted by the state, we would add those, add, add uh, you know, we would, right. we, would we would like to be in compliance in with, with XYZ. That doesn't system. exist now, how do you? I don't, uh, I'm just changed. my concern is if yeah. you had a a proposed uh, solar farm mm. and you and you've got this blobby you know uh, mm -hmm. mapping that maybe depending on how you look at it in the corner where there's a road or a development cutting through this proposed solar farm but you can't really tell because Lobby, and the more you zoom in, the more you're not sure. Is that is that developed land? Is it inside the blob, outside the blob, and then you end up? Right. I mean, to me, that whatever information can be gleaned from those Nature Conservancy maps would be very valuable in the course of our public hearing during our site plan review or our special permit hearing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that it's perfectly legitimate yeah. for somebody to say, "I have a problem with this because here's this map, and it appears to me that it's, you know," and we can take that information and weigh it. You know, what? if we, you know, we, depending what, on what? someone, Sorry. but putting it into the ordinance it, to me it seems yeah. quite quite dangerous. To, yeah. could, could it be written such that instead of it being black and white, you're inside the blob? No go. It's that the board has to take that issue into. They have to address that issue, consider it, and it's part of what they'll use as a criteria for making the decision. What? I think from a broad perspective, we already are taking into consideration broadly right. resiliency, climate change, you know, ecosystem services provided by this forested area, but to require that that, that map be the, the the thing that right. So instead of instead of saying it, we're going to versus other resources, it's black or white depending on what the map says. Right. Yeah. Rather make it right. Not not binding. I mean, my concern is people coming and saying, well, you know. Why are you not required to consult these other resources, these other types of resources that other entities have compiled that say climate change isn't real? Why don't you have to consult? You know, so right. I just right. I really feel that 
that's it's not appropriate for that to be in our ordinance. What what if the city adopted? That? If the city adopts it, right. You know, if the city it, adopts it and clarifies it, so it's it's specific. Right. I mean, we says, make our this own. is our this is our you know we're we're using this nature conservancy mapping as our outline for now. Right. And in the future, as future governmental sources become available, we might yeah. change. I mean, we have right a now, this is, this so is what that, we're saying. Yeah. And so it is black and white. Right. That's. I would be fine point. with that. Yeah. That's as as great, long as it's point. you know, yeah, that we're not that we're not calling it the Nature Conservancy map. Right. We're calling it the Northampton map. Yeah. <laughs> based yeah. on based on on somebody some professional review of it or you know some legitimate rationale to adopt it. So. Well, perhaps another way to look at it is there is in item number two, which hasn't changed since you all looked at it, there's a requirement, if you recall, analysis of the forest type and relevant habitat that will be lost. The analysis must include the structure and diversity of the canopy, mid-story, understory of the forested area to be cleared, and so forth. Perhaps <clears throat> the language could be moved up there to say um, uh, analysis should also consider information from the mapped area of Nature Conservancy's um, resilient and connected landscapes. So that becomes part of their analysis of what um, potential well, I think impacts are. So it's actually, that, yeah, but I, I think, that? I think yeah. Mark, the, like, hit, it's, it's if the city adopts it, then, it, then we can use it. Until the city right. adopts it, yeah. it's it, like, it shouldn't be used. It, it shouldn't yeah, be. Yeah, I just, if, I mean, it's just too subjective to say. At some point, someone's going to say, well, "How come your multifamily housing special permit doesn't require a review by the NRA?" Or you know, I mean, it's yeah. just it, it's, if you're saying for them to reference that, right? They may say, "Well, I referenced it," and according to my interpretation, the blob isn't even close to right. where I want to work. And so, I think to me, if the city adopts it and defines it, then we we get past all that noise. Right. Um, gee, would it be make sense then to have sort of future language in here so that the tree removal should not be located in within any area um, on city maps that include uh, resilient the connected habitat. landscapes or something like that yeah. so that or, it's not so that if the city doesn't have it I mean it right. could be in there as sort of a placeholder I mean could we instead of city I mean it's possible that the state would adopt this city, map city or state. Right? I mean, yeah. so it's you know I think it's um it's, it's got to be blessed by a public entity right. you know because that's serving the public interest I'm not suggesting that Nature Conservancy isn't right. but you know there's it's it is right. it is not a public servant. Uh, I, I was trying to link this with this resilience and regeneration when it's about when it's about resilience, right? So we are talking about. And I was trying to see, okay, so you're talking this, I think you should consider this what is come out because it's an action plan, right? Yeah. It's come out with something about resilience. So how can you refer to to that, to that action plan? Because that'd be part of the City plan or the comprehensive plan. Yeah, and so that that's a good point. Except I will plan. say that automatically one of your purviews in special permit is to make sure that any project is consistent with city adopted master plans mm -hmm. or other um, plans. So this the would then plan be, be part of, part of that umbrella. So, so that's yeah. automatically in the zoning already. So as soon as this is adopted then that would also be um, a reference, a reference for, point for, for, any, for any special permit, not okay. just for solar. Yeah. Because he, he was talking about regeneration thing uh -huh. here, respecting resource limits and natural. So I think you have elements here to kind of help to support this number three yeah. permit. Mm -hmm. um, so the I'm just going to see if this um, would make sense at all. The area of tree removal shall not be located with within areas mapped areas on maps adopted by the city or state. Or state. I mean, for in theory, federal. I mean, I don't know. You could 
right. Pima could come out with resilience maps now, and, you know. That's yeah. Um, so, but what if where, this is um, you know, yeah, like maps adopted by federal, state, and local jurisdictions? Because we could use it, like, if Cambridge adopts it, we can say, you know, another municipality that we trust. Um, what happens if this is adopted and nobody's, and the next day somebody's in front of us with a special permit and nobody's adopted the plan yet? You know what I mean? And you're saying as adopted by state or federal. Well, then it wouldn't come into play. Is what I'm saying is if, if the city if the city hasn't adopted a map like this or this map as its own, then this wouldn't apply. They would just still fall. The fallback would be the other okay. analysis. Okay. So if so, so if FEMA says here's the, the, the new map. We right. have so Northampton has to say we use the okay. FEMA map. Right. It's ours. Okay. okay. All right. So that's what I'm, I, that's what I'm suggesting. That way, it's sort of already in place. If and when the right. city okay. ever adopts the okay. use of a map as part of, yeah. you know, maybe okay. it maybe it's a spinoff after the resiliency plan is adopted or something like that. Yeah, they have had, I was reading they, there's some language in there that I think should make the link and say okay, so you have you know we're implementing this action plan, so yeah. you should abide by that. Yeah. So how can you read that wording then again? The area of tree room. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> it's a tough question. Um, and I'm not sure it's all, all spelled out here. So, the area of tree removal should not be located within any maps adopted by the city or state, city, state, or federal government um, uh, that have. Uh, um, I guess that, that delineate right. critical. Yeah. Uh, right um, yeah, that delineate a critical resilient, um, climate resilient landscapes and climate corridors. Wildlife? Well, wildlife is up above, but that's part of the resilient corridor concept is that it encompasses, um, habitat wildlife, um, and <coughs> Vegetation, basically, okay. to um, as a as an important feature to um, help um, against climate disaster and, mm -hmm. and um, change. So, if the property um, crosses the boundaries of these potentially delineated zones, that would be an automatic no. Or in the next section, where we take into account. The habitat, the diversity of the forest, you, there would be a softer way to maybe say yes or no. Right. Well, the other piece of this language is to um, um, say that if if there's a map that shows that this property has some portion of the property in this, um, you know, diverse um, 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 ecological resource area. Then, a but it already has a building on it. Then the area in that developed area, even though the map shows that there's an area in that vicinity that's um, important for um, climate protection or climate resilience, that um, it could still be approved because there's already easily developed. Right. And if it is okay, you go back to the development thing. So if this exist, exists infrastructure or whatever happened there, uh -huh. was not why we develop that, you know, having permit anything officially making right. that. So how we do with that? If well, it's been there for a while, you no know, permits, nothing, but it, it's been right. there and the Well yeah, it's okay. I mean, so if something was built out seventy years ago and we don't have any records for permits, it's still there on the ground. So the idea mm -hmm. is if it's already disturbed, wouldn't it be okay to put solar there? Because you're not you're not um, doing a it's clear kind of pristine landscape. Uh, yeah. yeah, in an area that's previously undisturbed. So it's more about the, just the physical characteristics than the, the legal paper characteristics of the right the development. It's the 
And the idea is that we want to allow this, but we want to be careful about where this happens. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to, you know, um, create a whole nother problem yeah. for um, yeah. um, climate in our yeah. in our community right. by, um, you know, destroying an area that's important for the protection right. of the community. And that's why we have the look back feature. So right, that that's why we kind of close that. Well, I was going to say, going, going the other way, if this is future language for um, if a defined map that's signed off by city, state, or federal uh, exists, then, then, then we're including that in the mix, and you're obligated to follow that map. If it doesn't exist yet, but we fully intend to get around to it at some point, does that give somebody an out in the meantime to potentially put a solar farm where we don't right. want it to be? I guess, uh, yeah, to Mark's question, like I don't understand how this, how referencing this particular map is is adding more protection because we're aren't we already asking for analysis about the same pieces of data that are contained in the map? Um, it could different? be, it could be, it could be very similar, very close. Um, I think they were just, um, uh, but. But the Nature Conservancy mapping is done sort of on, is on a much larger regional scale right. to look at those important pieces that are connected to other states' mm -hmm. um, areas, so that there's it's about a broader habitat as opposed to just a micro evaluation of that habitat on the so you know this information if someone were to do a study in a, um, one particular spot and say oh this is a really important habitat here there might um, it, you might not know that it's actually important because it's connected right. to this whole other I mean, system and that's a, that's an important point but I just feel like if that's the case then it's it's very premature for the city of Northampton to begin using that. Like, if that's true, then PVPC should go to all the member communities in our two county region, yeah. or regional plan association, or like ICLE, or you know, I mean, there's regional entities that are doing this work. Yeah, it just it, it's a mismatch between the the purpose of it and our city of Northampton ordinance. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because we were at the so this went um, part of. I mean, this discussion was at the Energy Commission earlier this afternoon at mm -hmm. 4 o'clock. And one of the members raised the question of, you know, it feels a little bit like um, if we put all these requirements in place, then really what's going to happen is um, someone's going to go to another town. I mean, that's, town yeah, and then, that's not moving the ball no. forward. Right. Not regional it's not really helping. Yeah. And then it's almost, he, I mean, he met, said, you know, it's kind of like NIMBY. We don't want the big solar farm in our, right. so we're going to push it out that way. But in fact, the effect is still the same. It's right. still having an impact on all of us. Right. So, I, I mean, it's definitely yeah. um, an important point to. And because also to. though this area is always small towns, right? You have to think regionally, right? Right. So right. Well, especially on this kind of yeah. thing. And also, we're all talking about trying to, you know, make op opportunities for renewable energy to the grid, which is not just about providing right. energy for Northampton. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Mind if I make a comment, please? Are we taking a, is this a public hearing? Or? It's um, not a public hearing, but you can okay. make a comment. Yeah, sure. I, I, I thought you would say don't yeah. don't make a public comment unless it's an item you want to talk about on the agenda. So I, I have been holding my comments. Okay. For them. okay. Um, so uh, you know, I've taken a deep dive into this issue along with Carolyn, and I've probably spent 40 hours um, studying it and talking to lots of um, other communities around the area and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission about this issue. And I think it is us pushing it um, and, and making them aware, especially the PVPC, of the, um, the tremendous um, scrabbling that communities are doing over this issue because of the failure of the state to um, to, to, to incentivize um, locating solar in what we consider appropriate places um, and also having such ambiguity around the Zoning Act. Um, and so I think that this process that we're going through is not about nimbyism. It's not about pushing it to our neighbors. It's about getting it right here and sharing that information with other communities, which, which I've already been doing, 
Um, I've, you know, I've spoken to Belchertown, Shutesbury, West Hampton, um, Heath, uh, you know, Ashfield. So, uh, you know, I think that what we model can be replicated, and um, and so we all bolster ourselves together because really the region, if you if you zoom out at the thirty thousand view, thirty thousand foot view, um, the region is under tremendous pressure for forest conversion for this. It, um, Siting um, solar farms in previous forested land is the most common siting in the state of Massachusetts. And, um, and the cheapest land for forest is in Western Mass. And there are tiny, tiny towns that, have, that don't have um, staff, that have all volunteer planning boards or cons comms that are um, really being taken by surprise by this. Right. So I think this is an opportunity for us to model some really good regulation. It's not about pushing it to our neighbors. Right. I think I, I think it's almost akin to when we get a, a project and we end up developing the, the sidewalk in the front, even though it doesn't attach to anything, mm -hmm. because that's what's in front of us now. Right. And the hope is that when the one next door to that property, then we'll pick it up there and, and, right, and, right, right. and do the link. So this would be the same thing, like in our little corner, not to push things away, but we can only deal with what we can deal with. And so but I still have an issue with if you're going to make it a condition for a potential developer, you need clarity. Right. right. And I don't see clarity on a, on yeah, a map that, that has yet to be defined. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I respect your point, Lily. I think, you know, that Northampton is a model for many other communities. Um, no one has yet to, to come here and, and show us that our ordinance is related to other ordinances that are being developed within the region. Like, this is a very different way of, of making a statement and, and requiring people to, to reference that map we're not there yet we're not it just doesn't seem appropriate yet you know it's just it, i think it could be the start of a conversation with some other communities and we can always modify the language in the future but it's it, it's it's not our our small little ordinances responsibility and and we don't it, i don't think that we have that kind of leverage anyway that if we were to hand this ordinance out to 42 communities that they're going to agree and begin to adopt it. I just don't think that that's realistic. Sam? Oh. Now you have a thought. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess I, I, I'm really curious, I mean, I really wish that we had, that we could see, like, like put up on the thing and actually see, yeah. see what we're really talking about because I think to a I certain extent you. yeah I'd actually like to see it because I think my guess is we all have different ideas of what of what this what this uh, cool blob right. is <laughs> you know <laughs> you know I'm like this is cool but you know it's yeah. also you know I, I you know again I go to back to like sort of my original question of how relevant is this to this particular discussion yeah. in, that, in, right. Right. in Northampton. Right. How, is there a lot, would there be a lot of legwork in, for the city to, to define? If we say, you know, this is our conservancy map, which is based on, you know, the Nature Conservancy broad mapping of the Northeast region and so forth, and this is our interpretation of it, but this is what, this is what we're going by for now. If, if the blob is more or less defined, how, how much work would it be for the city just to, to, to further define it? So this is it. This is where the line stops and starts and um, you need a grant or? Uh, yeah, yeah it, so. it probably wouldn't take, um, it, I mean, yes, it's doable. Um, uh, I, I guess it would be, um, you know, it's a, process obviously um and we, do, we do the same thing for like 100 year floodplains and so forth don't yeah. we take that right that information and say okay it starts here stops there and at some it's point it's still interesting be because it doesn't our ordinance is not regional cooperation like just because right. we're referring to it like that's not the same thing and so so it, it's it, i think it's great for us to take a regional approach but 
us looking at something from a regional perspective doesn't have any impact on the region as a whole. Like, if there's right. going to be regional cooperation to do this, like, everyone's got to be on board and do it. And, you know, or at least, a, or at least a number of cities. Yeah, yeah. You have right. to, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's just not the same thing. This it's, isn't that vehicle. This is for a developer doing a parcel right, on a, a parcel. specific yeah. you know, project. I actually right. think that the right person to, or the right organization to go to work with is actually through the Chamber of Commerce, where you're going to them and you're saying, uh, and you're saying these are this is the land that is, this is the land in Northampton that is that could be turned into solar panels, and by definition, the Chamber of Commerce inevitably or some sort of business entity would be interested in that because first of all, it increases the value of that land. You know, I mean, it's just that suddenly that that land suddenly has a purpose beyond beyond this, and at the same time, we as a community get to limit limit that. Right. You know, I mean, we're picking winners and losers, but we're but we're picking winners and losers using a using a, a methodology, which right. is okay. Um, I don't, I need another um, Wi-Fi connector, you know, a, one of those dongle things just yeah. so that it can do, be on Wi-Fi and um, blow it up on the screen. I have it on my computer, but I don't have a spare, you know, wireless right, right. thing for the monitors. Um, you can share it with us so, separately or? Yeah, I mean, I can, yeah. can if you guys want to get it. <laughs> Sure, how to the best way to yeah, do I mean, this is amazing work and it's enormously valuable. So, I'm just going to zoom out a little oh, bit to yeah, my So, um, this is the mapping, so you can see it. You wanna, have you, I guess you've already I haven't looked at it, yeah. yeah. Um, you want to come see it? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, on, come on. <laughs> So it's you know it's it's yeah. all over from the east of the Mississippi yeah. all the way up. Where are we there exactly? Oh, uh, right see. here. So then you can zoom in, um, and I'll just um, oh jeez, come on. I think that's at Hartford. I'm not sure. Harrisburg. Yeah, that one. It looks like it's like. Doesn't look like Pennsylvania. Yeah. So it's trying to. This is boring as Pennsylvania. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Everyone lives somewhere. Everyone lives somewhere. Okay, New York. Big one in the upstate New York. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Oh, that's Jeez, it's so sensitive. Okay. So who's climate? Who's climate? Windsor. 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 Yeah, so, um, you know, you see a little bit um, along the Connecticut River and then going over to Skinner and um, the Holyoke Range here. So, so that dark green is... So we're talking about sort of the light green yeah. and the dark green. Yeah, okay. but what is not... I'm sorry, yeah, the dark that? green... The dark green would be the, the more The dark sensitive. green is the sensitive right. and then all, anything that's blue and anything that's orange. So it's really this so dark green area. Zoom in a little more. Yep. So where is it? Just at the beach reservoir. Right there. Right there. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm sorry, the light green is the resilient. Is is sort of the area that we're not talking about. We're talking about looking dark. at um, where dark. there's confirmed diversity. Uh, which so is we wouldn't want development. Right. It's all in West Hampton. Even though there's tons yeah, of houses so and that roads green, already in that dark green? Oh, well, there's not tons in the dark green. This is, um, so this is Sylvester Road. Okay. And so, and then there's, um, and this is Turkey Hill Road. So you see okay. the white and okay. the light green yeah. Yeah. along the road. And then I think that may be a driveway or something. Yeah. And then there's some white pockets here mm -hmm. and white pockets. So those represent developed areas. So that's off oh, of okay. Chesterfield Road, Got those it. houses there. Okay. And then it um, on up. So um, then, yeah, if you go to West Hampton, um, you know, there's a little bit of gray here. Yeah, right yeah, in the area. center. Okay. Um, so it's and not so necessarily one big um, contiguous 
area in Northampton, but it is sort of west of that Sylvester Road. Yeah, area. that seems um, in general and, yeah, we relatively easy to define. Yeah, we wouldn't consider that. That wouldn't already be considered oh, in the other analysis that we... It could be. It could. There could be a lot of overlap. Okay. Um, I think the reason why we talked about adding this was just because it's another... It's it's another um, scientific analytical tool that mm -hmm. um, is not that's that's you could bring to the conversation, I guess, and that has some basis um, for understanding how impacts in these areas might really have a larger impact on on Northampton in particular right. because it's about Northampton zoning, but also to the larger discussion about where we want to be as a community to help in this global mm -hmm. um, effort to um, um, yeah. reduce our impacts mm -hmm. on, on the environment. So what would the downside be if, if in that verbiage you said the city of Northampton has adopted the Nature Conservancy's plan as our own? Right. I mean, why don't baseline? we just adopt it in the resiliency plan instead? Like, why put it in the ordinance if it's like a tool that might affect things other than solar development? Why don't we just, why doesn't someone talk about adopting it more broadly? And then if we have to reference plans anyway, then. Well, that's a good point too. I mean, that so one of the other op uh, things on the agenda was sort of, do you have any comments about that? Yeah. Right. If that makes sense to um, um, blend those and talk about that, I mean, and then yeah, yes, that seems that would be like a our citywide, yeah. like this is a much better yeah. forum for us to try to make some kind of statement that we believe in regional cooperation and that we're reviewing regional region level data, you know, and that that's important to us, mm -hmm. not in an ordinance about solar farms. Like that's because right, that's broad, that's specific. Right. And so I think that's right. yeah, I agree. And if you know, again, like if we're if every time we're doing special permit review, we're con we're making sure there's conformity with existing plans anyway, then great. And then that would be applicable across the board for every special permit, right. every yeah. site plan. Exactly. Yeah. Not and just then, solar. Yeah. yeah. You're okay. Great. I mean, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I would be careful because like careful what we wish for. Like if we say it has to it, that X Y Z can't happen in those areas. Yeah. I'm fine if we don't build more houses, but like, somebody else might not be. And you know, right. so I think it's you know picking and choosing to apply it only to, to the solar farms is not is not appropriate yeah. if we're okay. really committed to this. Well, I definitely like the idea of sort of using that, incorporating, saying you know, using every tool that the city yeah. has at its um, disposal to make sure that we are not, you know, that we are not making right. you know decisions that um, are have a negative impact on our climate and yeah yeah see regional collaboration and uh, is one of the the principles or the five principles they had in here regional collaboration and um, at certain point he talks about adaptation adaptive capacity, capacity what page what page are you on huh what page are you on oh uh, is the very end you have outline the five, oh, the five guiding principles. Yeah. yeah, so the regional element of that is in here. Right. And also when he talks here about this graph here, the adaptive capacity yeah, I mean, means right. that. So if this is the yeah. if this is gonna be the new gold standard of for scientific evaluation of what our climate risk is or what the value of our our spaces and geographies are, then then it should be referenced in this Plan, it seems. What is the plan you're referring to? Just so I can the climate resilience and regeneration plan, which is in draft form. So okay. once it moves out of a draft form, there will be a series of public, you know. Yeah. Workshops. And how does that relate to our master plan, sustainable Northampton? It would get it's sort becoming of part of an element okay. of that. Okay. And then, so what the board is talking about, if I wasn't clear before, Lily, is that every special permit generally has the board needs to make sure that the projects are consistent with any adopted plans so this becomes an adopted plan and so if in that plan you know there's um language about utilizing tools to ensure that we're not having an impact on um important 
climate corridors and resilient landscapes, um, then that automatically gets carried forward, not just for solar, but for other develop any other development that comes before the board that's a, that triggers a special permit. And how often are special permits triggered for residential development? I mean, under what circumstances? It depends. Yeah, it depends on the zoning. It, it depends, depends on the size of the development in number of units and okay. square footage. And um, location. So for instance, flag lots for individual right. single family homes trigger a special permit. But also right now, cluster um, projects, which might be more than um, one single family home, trigger a special permit. I mean, we've talked about moving things to site plan, but we can also include that, actually right now, the site plan language also says that it should be consistent with the plan, but we can carry that language over for site plan review as well. Okay, so that, that, that could possibly satisfy Alan's concern that solar is being unduly targeted as, right. you know, and over-regulated right. vis-a-vis yeah. residential yep. development. Yeah. 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 Good. So would you, so I know I'm not the chair. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you feel, like if this moved forward to legislative matters on Monday, which is oh, going wait, to. Oh wait, we haven't heard the fourth change. Right. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. You said there were four, and yeah, we, yeah. Were, we got held I up feel on the like so What is the four? Hold on. Sorry. Let me look at my notes. Sorry. So I didn't even say that so aggressively. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You guys are just on. You've, you've jinxed us now. Now we're. <laughs> We're being recorded. Oh. So sit up. <laughs> Do you have a bit? I do. Sorry. Yeah, so we got site plan versus special permit, three to two acres. The nature conservancy map and that's three. Okay, hold on, drum roll. <laughs> I maybe could help you out here. I, although I can't remember what, what the planning board has already reviewed, but certainly the idea of adding to the carbon calculation the projected growth, is that, was that already? Oh yeah, there were some minor changes yes. too about the... Um, Live wood versus timber, right. projected growth versus the carbon storage at the point of cutting. And then also biomass, I don't know if that made it in. Oh right. So um, in terms of the um, credits really? that um, should not, that, that the credits should not be used to fund biomass projects. Mm -hmm. Is that the one, is that the fourth one that you were thinking? I don't know if that was the fourth one, but there were, I'm just, uh, I just, want to, oh, okay. Okay, really, I just had three major ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but that was a good minor one, a couple of minor ones. We also changed, I don't know if it went to plane board, but there was, it was the, the, um, calcul the analysis was supposed to be um, on trees of a certain age, mm -hmm. and we reduced it to 20 dBH, so it's the same as sig the significant, significant tree, tree ordinance. That's good. Right. That's good. So that we're not creating a new kind of... Right. Um, yeah, no, no, that's right. Okay. Okay. Consistency. Yeah. And then analysis by a qualified third party for the um, calcul carbon calculations. Right. That language. I think that's... I mean, is that any... It's just, no, it's more clarifying that it's okay. by um, 
um, and instead of it coming from the solo developer saying this is what I think it's going to be, it can, Brent should be sort of a third Does it always come from, I mean like when we get like storm water or we get other stuff, like it's always coming from like the engineer or whoever Right, but it's not coming from the applicant saying my storm water is good. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I, you know, I've met the stormwater standards. It's right, the engineer right, right. has evaluated the property and this is how I'm meeting the stormwater standards. Okay. So it's the same, it's just making sure yeah. it's the same thing. Okay. So, so I'm comfortable with the two acre change. The yeah. change from three to two, is yeah. anybody? And, so and then the special, special permit. permit, I'm very comfortable with that. And then moving reference to important climate corridor, mapping resources into the climate resilience and regeneration plan. Okay. How often is that plan looked at? This is a new plan. This is, is this the first draft of it? So this, this is, is, yeah, yeah so, so, so I don't know how this goes. Sustainable yet. North Hampton. <laughs> Sustainable North Hampton was adopted in 2007, so we're sort of at the 10 year hmm. mark where we really should be reevaluating. And so this is part of that reevaluation where we were really weak on um, climate and energy issues in the um, 2007 plan. So we thought we should start with that as the first element of um, amendment of the plan. So in theory, you should update your plan every 10 years. Jonah, is this plan gonna, like, and this is, um, my, this is definitely jumping, but is it gonna, like completely affect the whatever get gas or pipeline may or may not be coming to this area ever. Um. No, I mean this is a plan about where Northampton, how Northampton wants to position itself and how we try to move away. I mean potentially, I suppose if in. I guess it could in the fact that if the idea and the goals and objectives here are to how can we continue to move off and, um, of uh, fossil fuels and um, be more sustainable in terms of the energy consumption yeah. we have, then if we can move away from fossil fuel you I mean, if we move more towards the electrical everything, there's more potential to wean off of fossil fuels. So if that's the case, and we're not, and the gas companies aren't converting gas to electricity, <laughs> mm -hmm. then potentially we're reducing the demand, so then maybe that reduces the demand for pipeline expansion. But a lot has to change, I think, and it wouldn't just be what we do in Northampton. Right? Yeah, no, I, I just, yeah. there's a network. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, in terms of process, yeah. do we do we actually take a vote to renew our recommendation on legislative matters, or or you said you're going to go yeah, do so it outside? Yeah. yeah. I would say that you could vote to say that you're comfortable with the two acres and. Um, with special moving permit. it to special permit and um, uh, sliding the, that language over there. The, and then changing the and but you think that it's not appropriate to have this language in here at this time and that it should be included in the um, resiliency plan um, and you know I don't think it's going back to public shade tree commission but um, so but it, it never was at a officially a public hearing there anyway. Right. <laughs> um, so I think we just take, it, I mean, basically what I could do is take out the language about the mapping mm -hmm. and send it to legislative matters and just describe the conversation that you all had. I mean, I'm comfortable yeah. with that being the approach. So yeah. I, I second what Caroline said. You have one more about that. Have all those in favor? I like to comment that I think this was a great discussion. Um, I think it's a much bigger win if we get it into the um, the plan 
and, and that it's applied more equitably across all types of uh, development. So um, I, I would hope that we can move forward with that. But in the meantime, I think, you know, I thank you for your good deliberations and I, I'm pleased with the outcome. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're on to our other items. Flip the order of sure. Great. I'm going to flip the order of our other items so that we'll start with the AMR on Stoddard Street. <laughs> okay, so this is um, we see several of these. Um, Stoddard Street is, I think it's the street that's split between URB and URC. One mm -hmm. half is C and one half is B. Just, it um, runs down into the end of State Street. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a property that has. Um, over 100 feet of frontage with an existing house sort of on one side of the lot. So the applicant, Mr. Schlesinger, is um, asking to carve off a 50 foot frontage lot, but the lot size is well beyond the minimum 3,750 into a second lot. And the existing house lot would, whoop, would also be maintained as um, 5,000, more than 3,750 square feet. So um, that would comply with the frontage mm -hmm. requirements. Great. Just close to town. Yeah. Would somebody so like to recommend move adoption? To recommend. Recommend that endorsement. Endorsement. Yeah. Second by Terry. All those in favor? Yeah. Anyone opposed? Congratulations. There you go. Well, thank you very much. I too enjoyed your deliberations. Oh, thanks. Good to see. How, how do we compare so it? Does this, yeah. what? Yeah. How do we yeah. compare, compare it to New, New York? New York. The beauties of all that. Well, New York was uh, tough. A much smaller place, so. Uh, but it, it's it reminded me of the liveliness of real exchange, and it's just great. I miss it. Um, does this go back? The approval go back to my surveyor who submitted it. So typically, what happens? So I am. Um, there's just an administrative process saying I'll sign it and stamp it, and then whoever wants to pick it up from our office, the mylar. Um, the mylar is what gets recorded at the registry to say it's a it's a lot. So when you're ready to close, um, then you can record it. You can wait to record it till when you're when you. So closing. do you have my contact information because I'd like to pick it up? Um, let's see. Uh, so um, Randy Iser put his email on, but I have your phone number is seven five nine nine. No. My phone number is uh, 413-222-5851. Okay. I mean, it should be ready um, tomorrow afternoon for pickup. Thank you all okay. very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So we have another a &R at the State Hospital? Yes. This one is for the Oak Park corner of Higgins Way and Ford Crossing. So it's just creating a separate parcel for that um, large tree that was protected right. at the corner. Right, right, right. And it's gonna be, it's a private park, but they're just carving that off just to have its own yeah. parcel. So it's great. Move to recommend. Second? Yes. All those in favor? Yes. Anyone opposed? Great. And there's one more AMR, is that right? Um, no. No, there's minutes. There's minutes. Are you going to approve the minutes? Approve. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Are there any typos or changes or edits? No, it's perfect. So March 28th and March 28th and April 11th. Uh, I should abstain. All those in favor? Yeah. Anyone opposed? And one abstention from Terry. Okay, so um, do we need to have a discussion about this or can we just say? we read it and we have recommendations for you can we send them or what's the yeah best? you can send them so what the process is we just need to get back to the consultant because the consultant's going to put this all in to design right um, view yeah so we can't make major Major's structural changes, changes right. after the consultant gives it to us but we'll be able to make text changes yeah. so okay. um, yeah so like adding sections or right sections. So really, and, and then once we get it in in design, right? <laughs> um, that's when it will be presented, and we'll do big public outreach to say, okay, here's the draft plan, um, and do different venues for taking public comments. So this isn't your only opportunity. It's just if you see glaring 
right. things that right. need to be. But I, I so, mean, but I think the comment about the mapping is yeah. good, and that can go in now. Okay. And anything else that you may have seen in the meantime, if in the next two days or three days, I can't remember when Wayne said that he was sending it back to the consultant, but in in the next week, um, then send those forward. Okay. Can That's I sure. recommend a pathway? Or the pathway set in stone? What? What? Yeah. Well, really? <laughs> The five pathways, like the action items. Oh, oh. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Like, I thought you meant physical pathways. Like pathway. physical pathway. like, no, it's like the pathways, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they have five data. Yeah, <laughs> There's five local and one yeah. national. Yeah, it's just I, I find it curious or odd that like one of the pathways is not like transportation mode shift. Oh, stupid. Great. Because yeah. yeah, the only like transportation related ones are about like vehicle emissions. Maybe we can like have more diverse transportation modes and fewer cars being driven. How do you do that when it's cold? And, like, There's no bad weather, Sam. Only bad clothing. So true. Good point. Good point. <laughs> I, I have a Great. bolt of orange Great. nylon that I'm going to make myself a big bike poncho out of. <laughs> yeah. Excited that much. And we'll all know who it is. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> So, do you want me to let other board members know that they have a few days if they sure. have comments? Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other items? Move to close the meeting. Let <laughs> me just ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even oh, say yeah. it. <laughs> See, I got it. Yes. Okay. Is this for the public to read and understand? Or that's something that I always wonder about these documents. This it is. It's for a late person, it's for us, it's for academics, it's for students. Or it's for everybody. It's for all of the above. But yeah. that's why this version is just the meat of it, and it's going to be formatted so that it can be more potentially more accessible. Yeah, because that's the main thing, the main suggestion I have is because, okay. you know, you have to bring people into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no other way if you don't talk. It's been Right. Use their language or whatever. Now, are you in a second Sam's motion? Let me see. Tick, tick, uh, no. <laughs> 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 okay. We'll stop here. Awesome. <laughs> Great. All those your favorite can mean somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone opposed to a journey? <laughs> 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 <laughs>